Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. Wow, it is a hot one today. The, uh, the thermometer just peaked past 95 degrees. The heat index is at 105, so it is a hot one. So it's gonna be a quick one today. We're gonna be doing a corn growing guide. So a lot of you have requested it, and in fact, it's probably one of the most highly requested complete growing guides. So we're going to do it in, uh, in about as short as time as possible because I wanna get this one out. So the reason why I waited this long till the heat, uh, you know, to the heat came was because corn, first off, needs very warm soil temperatures. You can't plant corn in anything below around 60 degrees. If the soil temperature is uh, really below 50 degrees, you're going to have rot. Um, and that's a big problem that plagues a lot of gardeners is they plant seeds and then they think that the corn seed is bad or that they have poor germination rates. And it's just because the, they put it in cool soil. So you need to wait till the soil turns warm. They always say knee high by the 4th of July. That's because if you get it in, um, most farmers around here uh, just got their corn in last week, so we're a little late, but we've been so busy that uh, today, today was the day that I decided to put it in, and wow, I think it's warm enough for corn. I think it's plenty warm enough for corn, in fact. Um, <laughs> so either way, the soil is nice and warm. And the next thing we did is we went, and we, we went ahead and we pre-soaked seeds. Now pre-soaking basically uh, hydrates the seed because in when you plant seeds in warm soil, generally that's after the wet season is over, so spring. Um, most of the rain has already kind of come and gone. Now we're almost kind of in what we consider the dry season here. And so we need to pre-soak our seed to give them the best chance of germinating. So here we've pre-soaked our seeds for eight hours. Uh, we took a just a glass of water here and we put in our seeds. And, uh, and we just let them soak. And what that's going to do, like I said, it's the seeds, because they start out kind of shriveled, they're going to absorb that, that water that would normally be in the soil and might not be there now. And it's going to give you a better chance at success. Now for a large scale garden, this wouldn't really be possible. And you kind of just uh, base you know, what you do on the law of averages. You, know, you plant, let's say a hundred seeds and even uh, you know, just in an unsoaked seed, you're going to get between 70 and 80 percent germination which is pretty good if you're planting out you know, several hundred square feet in our case here we have a 10 by 3 beds we have 30 square feet here and so we need the highest germination rate possible because we can't go back and replant seed like you could in a larger scale uh, because they're just too crowded in and once one starts growing up in this block we have here it'll really shade out the rest so we're going to space them closer together than we would normally and so we're going to about uh, half the spacing. So traditional spacing would be about every six inches. We're going to space ours about every three inches. And then if we go back, if we have to go back and thin, we will do so. And that allows us to still have a margin of error that if some don't sprout, we'll have a good amount to choose from. So we have a good solid block because that's the next thing to growing corn that you need to know is that you can't just grow one straight uh, row. You can't grow just uh, a couple seeds in a pot. You just won't have good germination, uh, or you won't have good pollination, I should say. So the, the corn is air pollinated, or wind pollinated, and when the wind blows, it blows the tassels and that knocks pollen throughout the air that will land on the silks of the corn. And if you've ever seen corn that's very sparse and only has you know, a few kernels here and there and it looks very patchy and, and uh, not pleasant to eat, well, that's because of a pollination issue. Each silk goes back to a kernel, and so each silk has to be pollinated by uh, a uh, by a piece of pollen falling from the tassels. So that's why we want to plant them in a block. The minimum that you should be planting your corn is in a four by four block. That's four feet by four feet. That means in 16 square feet of corn. You really need to have at least that much to have good quality pollination. Anything less than that, I can't guarantee you're going to have good results. So the next thing I want to talk about is fertilizing. Like I said, we, try, we fertilize with Trifecta Plus, and Trifecta Plus is a 5104. It means it has good amounts of nitrogen, good amounts of phosphorus, and good amounts of, of potassium. But the number we're really concerned about is the nitrogen. Trifecta Plus focuses on fast-acting nitrogen as well as slow-release nitrogen, which is going to feed the corn all season long. Corn is actually a grass, believe it or not, and grass, its main function is leaf production. And the, uh, and the corn that it's, that's produced is actually a byproduct. You actually need to have, in order to have good corn, uh, good uh, ear development, you need to have tall corn 
because those leaves are what generates the energy. So that requires a lot of nitrogen because the corn actually comes after the plant reaches full maturity. So if your plant does not reach full maturity, you're not going to have fully sized corn cobs. And that's where you get the little dinky cobs or you know, the misshapen cobs, things like that. So it is imperative that you provide enough nitrogen. And I always say that it's better to apply uh, too much nitrogen than too little because if you're applying an organic source of nitrogen, it can't be too much. If you're applying something like synthetic, like, uh, like a really high, like a 50-0-0 or something like that, I'd recommend not doing that first and foremost because it's not organic. And number two is because you can burn. Um, that's why I always err on the side of organic because you know, organic, you, you can never over apply it. So make sure you load on the nitrogen and other good sources of nitrogen are blood meal or things like fish emulsion. Those are great sources of nitrogen. You can also apply things like, uh, you know, chicken manure and things like that. Just make sure it's well aged and you're going to have good amounts of nitrogen. Um, but again, like I said, here on our plot, we use trifecta plus for everything. And so that's what we went ahead and used. The next thing that I want to talk about is watering. Watering is so important. If you've ever seen corn, I'll see if I can post a picture, get kind of brown and uh, bronzy colored around the edges, that's a lack of water. Corn is a very drought tolerant crop. In fact, that's why it's been grown in Mexico as their, kind of their staple crop because it's very drought tolerant. However, it does have its limits to drought tolerance. It does need water about once a week, otherwise it will begin to wither, especially if you're not growing uh, especially if you're growing a corn that is like a sweet corn, which is what we're growing. If you're growing like a flint corn or a flower corn, uh, that's going to, like a grinding corn, that can handle even less water. But because we want really plump kernels and we don't want it to be starchy and, and chewy, we want to make sure that the corn is well hydrated. So we water once a week our corn and that seems to do just fine. So we're just going to apply the fertilizer. And when we apply Trifecta Plus, we like to just broadcast it because we are not going on a by plant basis when we are direct sowing our seed. It's important to broadcast it so that the fertilizer can be evenly incorporated in the soil and have a better chance at coming in contact with the plant roots. And then we just wanna work that in. I just lightly fluffed the top one inch of the seed bed to allow for good soil contact. And so now I'm just fluffing it into that top one inch. And obviously once I plant my seeds, I'm going to water it in thoroughly. And that's going to allow the, the Trifecta Plus to work its way down into the soil column and start working right away. So like I said, I'm going to direct sow my seed. And when I do, I'm going to create rows. And I'm going to simply plant my seed like I said, about double the spacing that I would normally. So instead of every six inches, I'm going to plant it every two or every three inches. And that's just going to ensure that I have good germination rates. And if I have to go back and thin, I can. Now with corn, you do want to provide a really deep soil bed. Sometimes I see gardeners planting in raised beds that are only about four inches high, or they're growing it in soil that's very compacted. Corn is one of the crops you need really good fluffy soil because corn does not have a deep root system you'll find that often corn will push itself out of the soil that's why corn falls over a lot if you have uh, if you have soil that's not really loose one thing that'll happen is in high winds or high rain it will fall over that's because soil is it's a lot like pine trees. You know, pine trees have such a shallow root system and so do corn. And they're so susceptible to falling over. And once they fall over and the, and the stem gets pinched, they're pretty much done. So another thing too, is when we plant in a block like this, the corn is going to self, uh, kind of almost self support uh, itself. Even if we do get a really heavy rain or really heavy wind, um, and we do have about 12 to 14 inches of really good loose soil in here, it's going to allow the roots to go down deep and establish themselves to anchor themselves in so that they're not getting blown over. But um, even if they do happen to get blown over a little bit, they'll, t they'll fall onto another corn growing up to not allow it to fall as far and you might be able to save it. Now, one thing with corn is you do have to be aware that it does require a little bit longer to mature than some of your other crops. If you are in zones four, 
uh, three or two, you're going to have a difficult time growing corn because it requires about 85 to 90 days to mature. And so I think it's just really important to understand that, that you know, unfortunately there are, depending on where you live, there are some crops that are just more difficult to grow or almost near impossible to grow. And just keep that in mind that if you don't have a long enough growing season, it's best. I mean, you can always try it and you never know, but it's also sometimes best if you want to guarantee success to uh, grow crops that you can guarantee uh, better results. Um, with corn, you'd really be rolling the dice. Um, even here in zone six where we're at, uh, we'll have corn by around mid to late August. And that means that uh, for those that start getting cooler temperatures around late August, um, you're going to obviously need the warmer temperatures to ripen the corn and to allow for good sweet corn. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, very starchy corn in cold weather. The final thing I wanted to talk about was sunlight requirements. Corn is one of those crops you just cannot or should never skimp on sunlight. We're going to be giving these corn about eight to 10 full sun hours, and that means they are getting direct sun. Um, if you give them any less than around seven hours, they're really going to struggle. Again, corn is a grass, and all of those corn leaves are what is photosynthesizing to make your corn sweeter, obviously with it being sugar corn, or sweet corn, um, so it needs to build up the sugars. That is created through photosynthesis. Also, uh, because it is a grass, that's how it generates energy to grow, um, just to even grow more leaves. So you need to allow for lots and lots of sunlight. If they're in a part of the garden uh, that is going to get around four to five hours, just honestly, it's one of those crops. Again, I always say this, it's best to just know what you can't grow uh, right off the bat because if you get four to five hours, you're just not going to have success. There's just, you can't, it's not one of those things that you can gamble with. You just won't have success. Um, also, another final note too about soil pH. I was just remembering, I always go through in growing guides, corn really enjoys a neutral pH. If your corn, is, uh, if your soil is very acidic or very alkaline, it's going to be negatively affected. We have amended this with Trifecta Plus, but the bed is solely pure compost meaning that the compost is going to neutralize any acidity found in Trifecta Plus when it comes to fertilizing, and it's going to bring it back to a pH of seven. It's very, very important that, uh, that you have a compost base because compost is a natural neutralizer for anything you put in your bed. And that's going to bring it back to a pH of seven that corn will absolutely love. And that's why a lot of farmers will apply lime in, their, in the beginning of their uh, growing season or, or they will apply sulfur if their soil is too alkaline. They're attempting to bring their soil to a pH of seven or around seven um, so that they can have better success. And so that is everything there is to growing corn. I hope you enjoyed this complete growing guide. I wish you the best of luck with it. And we will definitely keep you all updated as it grows and when it comes time to harvesting. If you'd like to see us harvesting some corn that we grew at our cottage garden, I'd recommend checking out a link uh, that I'll post in the description box below. It is truly amazing. I'll also post a card to it because it is something that I think everyone should check out to see really truly how this growing guide will, uh, will result in very successful corn. It was some of the most amazing corn we've ever grown. It was really delicious. And uh, since then we've been wanting to grow corn again, but it's, it is a crop that does take up quite a lot of space. So it's something we sometimes will grow, sometimes we won't. And, uh, and that just, that fired me up to grow it this year again, because I love sweet corn. It is just a great crop to eat both raw and cooked, and it is so delicious. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And also for those that have stayed to the end of this video, thank you. I wanna uh, remind you all to give this video a huge thumbs up. It really does help. I know it seems something super nominal as just a thumbs up, but YouTube wants to see you engaging with this video. And if I did a good job of helping you grow corn better 
or helped answer some questions you might have, that is definitely the you know the least that you could do is just give me a thumbs up because uh, you know it it does help spread our video around to people that have not yet seen it. And also, if you've not yet subscribed, now'd be a great time to do it. We're going daily, or we've been going daily for about a month now, and that means daily content helping you grow bigger, go home, grow more food, and having more fun doing it. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed. And uh, as always, this is Luke from the Mi Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch y'all later. See ya.